Hello, welcome to JupyterCon 2020. This talk is about teaching an active learning class with JupyterBook. Let's get started. A little bit about myself. My name is Faraz Musvi. I'm currently a lecturer in the CMPS department at the University of British Columbia on the Okanagan campus. I wanted to introduce you to the JupyterBook project. So JupyterBook project is uh, something that I've been using for the past few months uh, when teaching went online and I was struggling to find a way to give my students a coherent and linear uh, outline of what to do when, uh, when teaching my courses. Typically, I like to teach my courses with an active learning strategy uh, where I, that's learner-centered, and I try to make sure that there's enough activities inside the lecture to keep students engaged, and also to have them engaged with the material at a deeper level. Uh, during class, and then before class, uh, they do all the pre-readings or the lecture video, watch it, uh, lect lecture video watching uh, that they need to do. So I was struggling with a way with my current learning management system to just figure out that structure for the students. And so I discovered the, uh, the JupyterBook project, which allows me to uh, use notebook files and just plain MD files uh, and then version control them so that I can reuse it for future courses and also remember what I did uh, last year. So the JupyterBook project has uh, three main features. Uh, this, the interface has three main features. On the left-hand side is the essentially the chapters of the textbook, and you can break them up into different parts. So this is a get started part. This is the write book part, uh, make your book interactive. So this is the, the table of contents of the entire book. Okay, so this stays with you uh, wherever you go in the book. So if you, let's say, want to go to references and citations, you click on that link, this table of contents stays with you. You can collapse it by using this button here and then expand it again using the hamburger buttons. On the right hand side you'll see the right sidebar which contains the uh, headers for the current open page uh, and each of these pages are built either using uh, Jupyter Notebook files or just raw MD files and you can access that by clicking on this page here this, this uh, git uh, Octocats logo, uh, click suggest edit, and that'll take you right to that MD file that exists where you can edit it um, on your own Jupyter book. All right, so let's take you to an example uh, that I had for one of my classes. This is for Physics 111. Uh, the first thing I did was I had to create a syllabus that conformed to my university's guidelines. So I had all sorts of information on the syllabus, um, a message from, my, from the instructor, a way to contact the teaching team, learning outcomes for the course, uh, what they need to purchase for the course, etc. Once you have your syllabus or any web text, you can use popular tools like Hypothesis to highlight and annotate your text. And I actually applied this on my syllabus for, uh, for physics. So <clears throat> I've got a bunch of annotations here uh, from a bunch of students who've had questions about my syllabus. Uh, and this is the popular annotate your syllabus movement. So if I click Introduction to Python, um, you'll see that I've got a video here embedded using an iframe from Dr. Mike Gelbart of uh, University of Vancouver, who teaches in the Master of Data Science program. These are fantastic uh, lectures that, are, that he posts completely open source, uh, and also there's associated with it notebooks that exist. And the notebooks take you through everything you need to know about how to get started with Python for data science. Um, and the cool, cool part about this is that these notebooks are actually runnable cells in a browser. So there's no need for environments and setting up uh, these, uh, setting up Python on your computer or R on your computer. You can just get started with a notebook, get students motivated and interested in the content that you're teaching them, and then work on setting them up locally on their computer later. So in this particular case, I have this cell that has x equals 42. I can change that to x equals 45, and then uh, print out x, and then I get the output there. So this is an, a, a very important feature for me to get students that are uh, just starting out with Python or are uh, interested and get, get them you know, right into coding on day one without having to spend a whole week setting up their environments. That part is necessary, and it does come, but I can defer that to later uh, and initially just get them started with coding right away. 
So that's the first example I wanted to show. The second example is, let's say you're teaching something uh, like platforms, where you want to uh, have, you know, where, where you have typical slide, um, typical slides. And so this again, this is a Jupyter notebook that you can go through in class, but it turns it ends up being quite text heavy. So with the addition of a plugin actually called um, Jupyter Rise by Damien, uh, great project by the way, it's fantastic. Clicking on this button here allows me to uh, present this notebook as a series of slides. So this is actually a really, really cool feature of uh, Jupyter Notebooks. It's an extension actually. Um, and now I can actually present this material uh, bullet by bullet, uh, segment by segment, and I can you know do all sorts of things like draw um, on my on my screen here, or I can have just a, a whiteboard that just clears everything, and then I can draw on there. So it's a really neat uh, set of uh, tools that exist that allow me to present notebooks as slides. I can actually have. Um, embedded uh, polls in my no in my notebook. So I can, uh, uh, this question is from the 2020 Stack Overflow Developer Survey. I asked my students what the most loved programming language is, um, and most of them guessed Python incorrectly, but it was actually Rust. So uh, when, when they vote on these slides, I can present this uh, this view for them with just a question, and then when uh, when they submit their answer, they can see what the result is from this, from uh, from from what their classmates believe. On to the uh, next example. The next example is, let's say you're teaching something that's a little bit more run of the mill, more traditional, let's say something like Microsoft Excel, and it doesn't lend itself well to be taught from notebooks. Well, then you have your slides, your PDF or your PowerPoint or your keynote slides. Um, and you can also embed those into a Jupyter notebook or, uh, and then just go through them as you would normally. Each week, I give them a summary of what they have to do that week. I give them an introductory video. Uh, for instance, I want, I want to explain to them the main concepts of the course this week, and then what they need for the homework, what they need for the test, etc. I also assign them specific videos that are sort of smaller in length, and these videos are from Jonathan Palmer uh, of Flipping Physics, and also from Crash Course uh, Physics. These are several physics videos that are really, really quite excellent in terms of their quality. Um, we have these Sphinx panels that are drop downs that allow students to um, click on the ones that they want to watch, watch the video. And then once they're done, close them up and go to the next one. And on the sidebar here, you've got some um, check boxes here that essentially are a way for them to keep track of what, uh, which videos they've already watched and which videos uh, they still need to keep going. I'm not a chemistry teacher myself. However, this idea of embedding videos is very transferable. Uh, you can also have these uh, FET simulations that allow you to uh, interact with molecules um, and then essentially explore different, uh, you know, different configurations of these molecules. And um, and this is kind of you know these exist for biology, for for chemistry, for all sorts of sciences. Uh, and these are really really great. Uh, really, really great simulations that you can use to give students, again, a way to interact with the material at a deeper level. In addition to that, you can also draw molecules with uh, Marvin.js, which is an online uh, chemistry drawing tool, where you can ask all sorts of detailed questions about this. What happens when I add an OH here? What happens when I add another OH here? And things like that. So that sort of, you can build questions around uh, these, uh, these Marvin.js chemistry draw structures. So you can imagine how useful this would be uh, for, uh, for a lab or a class uh, that's run online or even in person uh, when you want to do a demo in class uh, of how things work. You want this interactivity to exist. That is a quick tour of the Jupyter Book project uh, as far as it applies for active learning uh, in teaching. Uh, I've got lots of stuff here that you're welcome to, uh, to explore. The best part about this is that if you actually want to, uh, to try this out, it's really easy. Uh, I've created a template that just with a click of a button, you can, um, with a click of a button, you can just create your own site within, you know, a couple of minutes. So here's my Chrome window. Uh, I go to github.com. Uh, I'm now logged into my demo account and I've got this short link that I can give you. Uh, so JB underscore course. 
And this gets this takes you to my Jupyter Book course template. There's some directions and uh, uses instructions on how you want to do it. But essentially, it's very simple. You click use this template. Uh, you give your new repository a name. Let's call it New Course 101. Uh, you make it public and it's important to check this box here include all branches to access your website you just need to go to uh, the settings and then scroll down to github pages and then your site is and then it'll tell you that your site is published all right thank you everybody for listening as promised i've got uh, the links for how to get to the course template uh, as well as some of my actively ongoing courses where you can check out uh, see how i'm using jupyter book in my live classes this year i look forward to seeing some of you um, on twitter bye bye